What's going on YouTube? It's your boy HD and today I'm back with another reaction video. I'm going to be reacting to Nicole and this is video about SOC Endless Full Roadmap 2022 Security Operations Center Salary Certifications and Resources. I've reacted to one of her videos before so I just want to see what she's talking about. Uh, what I tend to do is try to find people that talk about cyber security or like especially like SOC. That's my background mostly. I started out in the SOC. So I always try to see if what people are putting out there is, you know, actually good information, which she did last time. So uh, I'm ready for it. Let's see what she has. Entry level cybersecurity career, and that is the SOC analyst. I will be going over what exactly a SOC analyst is, different tiers of a SOC analyst, what skills you will need to become a SOC analyst, where you can work as a SOC analyst, what is the salary of an entry level SOC analyst and an experienced SOC analyst, how you can get started step by step and what are some good and by the way if y'all watching this right now i've really been contemplating on um dropping my own version of like you know a sock on this video whether it be in parts or whatever maybe i bring in my guy et and we do a series on it but um i've definitely been thinking about that a lot uh just because you know i rather it's, it's nothing like having too much information too much good information that's why i like to say it so let me know what you think about that and i'm about to get back into it good resources credentials and certificates stay to the end of the video and i'll be going over a day in the life of a sock analyst if you don't know who i am i'm nicole and this channel is all about helping you get a job in cybersecurity and IT. i actually do work in cybersecurity and i have a linkedin below so check me out there also comment like and subscribe what exactly is a sock analyst and well a SOC analyst is basically on the front lines the first person in a security operation center or SOC that is responding to the cyber attacks that's extremely vague what a tier one security analyst will do is carry out triage so where what ticket goes where and look at alerts and escalate any to tier two if the SOC analyst sees anything wrong, oversees and configures security monitoring tools such as Splunk or a security information event management tool. A, a tier two SOC analyst is actually... Okay. She said a lot, so listen, let me make it slower for you. In a SOC, your primary tool that you will work out of is a SIM. So Splunk also has this version of uh, SIM functionality, which is Splunk ES, so for enterprise security. Uh, the ones I've worked with in the past have been Splunk. I've worked with uh, Elastic. I've worked with Curator. I've worked with McAfee's on SIM. Uh, I've worked with uh, ArcSight. I'm trying to see any other one that I might have missed. Uh, but I don't know. But anyway, so pretty much normal day to day is you logging into a SIM and most of the time you're going to monitor the alerts that come in from the SIM and they will be different severity. So you got low, medium, high and critical. And so that's one part of what you're doing. Also, you could be monitoring your ticketing system as well as emails and any other type of ways that you guys handle security event alerting. Now, mostly what they will do is they'll triage this and all triage is stand for is investigating. And most of the time, a tier one, based on your SOC, they, not, they don't have all day to pretty much triage something. So if it goes over a certain amount of time, they will send it to the tier two or tier threes. And that's when they handle the stuff that the tier one can handle. So hopefully that's kind of a, a slower form for you to understand you know what a sock analyst a tier one sock analyst does okay let's get back into it going to be responding to the incident and addressing its incidences and evaluating incidences identified by tier one analysts they're going to carry out in-depth threat intelligence to find the perpetrator of the attack they may create and implement a strategy for containment of this attack Next is the third tier SOC analyst. And a third tier SOC analyst deals with critical in. Okay, so pretty much what I said about the tier two, your tier two is that advanced SOC analyst that has a little bit more experience. So whereas we're not just looking at stuff and creating tickets, we're actually reviewing processes that might happen on the host. We're signaling, hey, if we need to isolate a host, 
we're reaching out to tier three other business units to pretty much work with them to understand, hey, what's going on on your end? I see this, this, and this. I think this possibly could be malicious, but I don't have, you know, auto logs at my disposal. Can you look at this on your end? And then that's when we actually sign. If, if it comes from tier two or three, then most of the times it's something big or we're the ones that say, oh, you know, that's a false positive. You know, we also are monitoring the allow list, the block list. We are um, also probably working on documentation, policies, playbooks, use cases, meeting with our, you know, sim engineers, things that the level ones don't do because they are eyes on glass. That's what we refer to them as. And so I kind of already said what tier three does too. So, but I'll let her say her, her spill about it. Incidents is that the tier one and the tier two are not qualified to do. This is also the SOC analyst that will get paid the most. They may carry out vulnerability assessments and penetration tests. They may review the alerts and then they may identify threats and security gaps and unknown vulnerabilities. And they'll have tons of various professionals working in the SOC. Most people will start at tier one, which is the front lines. And that's usually what people are referring to when they talk about a SOC analyst is just that person on the front lines doing the in the trenches. A tier one SOC analyst is a little bit of a grind and there is a lot of repetition and it is just a lot of data coming at you. But that being said, it is a really good place to learn a lot about cybersecurity. People say there are no entry level jobs in a cybersecurity, but a SOC analyst is probably one of the best places to start because it's so chaotic and it does get your door in the foot. Also, a lot of SOCs have 24. I think she meant <laughs> it gets your foot in the door, but I will say there's a caveat. A SOC analyst is not an entry level role because it requires you to know a little bit about networking, a little bit about databases, a little bit about IT operations. It requires you to know these things. Sure, you can be trained on the job, but from my experience, it's really hard to do that when you have so many different alerts come at you. Like it can it can be overwhelming at times when you are in a sock a sock, what you call it, because if your sim is not tuned or you got bad rules coming in, or you actually do got some malicious stuff in, everybody heads, you know, are spinning and working on stuff. So I just like to claim, you know, like put the asterisk. It's like, yes, it's an entry level role, but it's not actually entry level and function. This is why that I've said on a couple of videos that you've seen the rise of SOC endless pay go up because they're actually more essential than people thought. The pandemic has showed how essential, you know, a good SOC could be for your organization. So, and um, also I think, uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut this out. Let's go. Or seven shifts. And if you're new to the field, you most likely will be working a night shift until you get a few more years of experience. More experienced professionals are more likely to take the day shift. If you're willing to work a night shift, it might be a really good strategy to land your first job and then try to get out of that night shift as quickly as possible because it is bad for your health. I've seen a SOC analyst go by so many different names. Some of those are cybersecurity analyst. That is probably the most common one. And I would say they're interchangeable. Cybersecurity analyst, SOC analyst, information security analyst. I've seen that. InfoSec analyst, IT security analyst, IT specialist with security at the end of it. So you always have to make sure to look at the job duties because these job titles are so vague and there are no universal job. So she's right, but mostly you'll see cybersecurity analysts, SOC analysts, threat analysts. Um, like she said, she threw them. I've never, IT specialists know that I've never seen that with being some, with that's related to a SOC. But yeah, the job duty is going to say, if you see something that says like 24 by seven uh, monitoring, or uh, anything along the lines of that. Nine size out of it is an actual sock. Uh, what they tend to do is kind of dress it up to make the role look a little bit more important. Like we were sock analysts, but my title was a threat analyst. Threat analyst sounds cooler than a sock analyst. Threat analyst actually sounds like you specifically know about threats, and a sock is more you know all encompassing, more broad. So yeah, that's it. Uh, what is the video getting long? You know, and we're not even halfway through. I, I look, I'm cooking on this thing, man. You know what I'm saying?
Y'all know what it is if y'all like these reactions. So let's get back to our video. Job titles. Always make sure to look at the job dude. Some skills that you will need to become a SOC analyst is a good foundation of what IT is and a good foundation of what networking is because you will probably be watching network traffic a lot. And a good place to start would be the Google IT support certificate. The link is below in the- No. A good place to start is not the Google IT support certificate. It is not at all. That cert is not even on a lot of jobs. Don't even bother. If you're going to go that route, you might as well get start with A plus, then net plus, security plus. Don't bother. It's not even a cert that's uh, pretty much sponsored by Google. It's actually a Coursera cert that they made, and you don't even find that cert on Google site. So no, don't get that cert. You're going to need general knowledge of PowerShell and Bash scripting. These aren't that hard of skills to pick up. You're going to need knowledge of multiple computers. I would disagree. See, when, when, when someone says that, and I've been noticing this through the whole video, you know, no disrespect of her because I know I have to look at her LinkedIn. Matter of fact, let's do it right now. Okay, so I'm on her LinkedIn. Uh, she was IT specialist, network admin, sys admin. So she got a good background. Compliance engineer. And now she works on the WAF, which is a web application firewall. And she's a security engineer for that. So she definitely has a good background. And now after her saying that, I will say that's the reason why she probably said something easy to learn because as a sysadmin, you do a lot of things with PowerShell and Bash, um, Linux, Windows, a lot of automation things. So to her, that's probably easy. But to someone starting off, I don't think it's that easy because so in one, in one thing, she's talking about learning it. So actually typing it, automating out. But then there's another thing to actually interpret is something malicious happening when an alert comes in. Because sometimes I've dealt with, it would be an alert that's a low or a medium that technically is supposed to not really matter too much. However, when you actually research, oh, this is what they're doing in the script. This user not supposed to do that. Then you got to reach out to that user and go look at their activity over the last three months and see what's going on. Then you find out. So I get what she's saying, like actually like trying to say learn it, but interpreting it and really not having all that time and not being that experienced with it is a little different. So, but I, I do understand after looking at her background, I understand why she would say something like that. Computing platforms and the cloud basics. So think Unix, Linux, Windows. Having a IT certificate can definitely help you get a SOC analyst position. So do you know what IP addressing is? Do you know what the TCP IP is? Do you know what the OSI model is? These types of things you will definitely need to know. Do you know what DNS is? And the difference between forwarders and resolvers? Important information. If you do not, I strongly suggest learning that right now. Also knowing the basics of security information event management, uh, tools such as Splunk would be extremely helpful. You don't need to be a pro. You just need to know the basics and do a couple of projects on this. Uh, there are tons of different tools you can learn, but just learn the concepts and these foundations. Analyzing. I'm going to see what she's going to say, but see, and so on her background, she hasn't worked in the SOC, so it's easy to read the stuff that you see, but... Um, everybody can't really get access on. Well, you know what? It's different now. You can do boss of the socks. And so it kind of can walk you through. You got to try hack me library, other places. I'll show you how to use Splunk. All the skills you talked about are wonderful, but how do you put them together to make an actual sock analyst? I've met with clients that did all this try hack me and all these other things, but they don't know how to do this part. This is the hardest part to get through. When you want to be a sock analyst and if you haven't been one it's hard to tell somebody how to do it now i'm gonna see what she has to say and then i'll rebuttal and tell you what i normally do to my clients that have you know sock analysts you know analyzing a pcap is extremely important to know i do have a project below that walks you through how to analyze this it is by coursera but i strongly suggest you that also being able to triage events fast is important but that won't really come until you have worked a few, a few months and then you'll start to pattern recognize things that just repeat over and over and it, it will get repetitive. Being able to analyze emails and malicious content is also something you will need to know. Uh, some really good sites to go to is 
virus total, URL scan, any run and analyze, an off network PC or VM, and then really just get some hands-on experience there. Also being able to document things and then creating standard operating procedures such as a user guide so someone else can follow step-by-step -step of something that you previously had done. So where can you work as a SOC analyst? The possibilities are endless. I mean, SOC analyst is probably the fastest growing job and you can work in healthcare. So yeah, knowing how to analyze PCAPs is a big one. Um, definitely you can use a- uh... You can work in the DOD. Oops, you can go to um, malwareanalysis.net, download PCAPs, and um, look at them through Wireshark and have some questions for you to answer. And I will say that will help you when you're reviewing like network logs, right? Like, for example, like we used to have uh, Palo Alto network logs come in. So you would look for the different headers like uh, ACCP, URL, URI. Um, you will look for uh, different IP address or source, destination. And it's a couple of other ones that you can do when you're doing a Wireshark that you can filter for to look for, but that will kind of get you to understand, okay, now I'll take what I did, this packet capture, and then I go look at it in a, a sim to figure out what I need. So that'll definitely help you. And I forgot what she said with Coursera, but okay, let's see what she's talking about. Ever heard is instead of saying my salary requirement is this, Today, the market places a SOC analyst salary at about $115,000 based on my skill, based on my experience, based on my certificates, degree level, and that is how much I want. You may or may not get it, but at least you are trying, and it's really hard to say, no, that isn't the correct pricing if you did your research. So always make sure to do your research and then just go into that interview knowing your number. If we look at some of these jobs, I, I don't know what she said, but I did do a video on SOC analysts. And uh, since recently I've had to do this with a job offer, here's a way, right? You can go two ways. You can get the budget. Sometimes they'll give it to you. Or you can hit them with, you can already have a, a, a number. So throw your number out, boom, they'll say it. You could say, if even if your number is way higher than what you're making now, you could say, hey, what's the number? that you could submit right now and get with no approval, like you don't need no approval for. And that might be close to what you want too. So you can try that route as well. That's something I just learned. Because I just, just went through it. So that's a little gem if you're still watching right here. Hit the like button if you like that tip. I found a junior SOC analyst in Colorado Springs for 80 to 90K. Uh, so it does exist. So how do you become a SOC analyst step-by-step, step, right? I'm sure that's what you're wondering. The first step is you are going to need a good basis of IT, networking, operating systems. Step two is to learn the cybersecurity basics. The best place to start with this is probably the Security Plus, and that's also a very good certificate to get. And then after you've learned that, then you are going to want to pick up SOC analyst skills, and you can do this in a variety of places you can get a degree so overall it was giving you know repetition and um overall it's still a good video i guess different for me from somebody who's actually soccer professional watching it uh for somebody that's a newbie it might be good um but overall she didn't really say anything that that was like totally wrong i just clarified or maybe slow down and simplify some things that she said so hopefully uh, you like this video hopefully you go watch her video support her uh, because like i said i've just been doing this just so and if somebody want to react to me i'm I'm fine with it as well i've I just been doing this so, to help people out because so many people are trying to figure out how to go about the career and so everybody's popping up around the place with you know their own content and i'm just here to validate it you know my linkedin is in my descriptions as well um with my start page so you can always go figure out know who i am in my background as well because uh, i do have that it background so that's how i kind of really know about that so yeah i appreciate you if you made it this far thank you for rocking with me i got some big stuff coming up next video you see me i'm probably gonna have a haircut but uh yeah man shout out to y'all man appreciate y'all i love y'all and it's your boy and i'm out